Today we're talking about a three-phase diode rectifier using just diodes, so the most basic form of a diode rectifier for a three-phase circuit. And when we talk about three-phase, we're talking about three different AC signals and they are shifted by 120 degrees out of 360. So they're evenly spaced just like standard three-phase power. So we want to take this AC power and turn it into uh, DC power. So how do we do that? Well, we have this circuit here. These are six diodes and each one, so for each phase, and we have A, B, and C here, they are connected to one diode points out and to the load. Here R is our load and one comes back around and points to each of the phases. So there's six in total, three pairs. This uh, illustration works. I like to redraw it as uh, slightly different. This is a different representation. And I just think that this one helps kind of the flow of the current a little bit. Here we have our redrawn circuit on the left here. And then the signals for each of the three phases uh, drawn on the right. And this is taken from Wikipedia because it's a very good representation. And here you can see um, the blue is the A phase and then B is the red one, and then C is the green one here. So what we're going to do first is look at just this phase. So we're going to narrow in on this area where blue A is the highest voltage, B is at a middle voltage, and then C is the most negative voltage. When we have V is highest, A is highest here, we have a voltage is going to current is going to flow through here and it's going to go up into here. Okay? Because this voltage is the highest among these, so this is the highest voltage, B is slightly in middle and then C is negative, we know that current, the highest voltage is going to win essentially and that diode is going to turn on, so D1, and these are going to be blocking because this voltage becomes the highest one, and then this voltage from here to here, so this is for B, B is more negative, so this is actually blocking, so it doesn't go here. The same we can check the voltage here, if it's the highest voltage, the C voltage is going to be much lower, it's negative, so it's also going to be blocking here. So there's no way that the other diodes can turn on. So only the top one, the highest voltage turns on, and current flows through here and goes out to this side. Now, where does the current go on the bottom side? Once it gets down to here, the current has to pick a path. So we need to look at the different voltages. So we know that C is a negative voltage, low voltage here, and we know that the B is the middle voltage and A is the highest voltage. So what it's going to do is actually it wants to go to the lowest voltage. The lowest voltage is going to turn on. So it's going to be our C here, so ABC. It's going to actually go through this one and then come back through our system here. It has to be this one because if any of the other ones were turned on, there would be a violation of KCL or KVL. So, okay, for example, if this one was turned on, that means that, so this is B, B. If B were turned on, that means that this voltage, it's an ideal diode, so the voltage across it is zero. So this voltage and this voltage must be the same. But this voltage is still higher than this one, so this diode would also turn on. But that violates the voltage law. It can't happen like that. So it goes through to the lowest voltage and then comes back around. If you believe that on this top one, the highest voltage wins, and at the bottom one, the lowest voltage wins. Once you've understood that, then it's easy to just go through the rest of them. Here's our next phase. Blue, the A is still the highest, and B is now the lowest voltage. So what we do, we would start through here. We know A is the highest voltage. That's going to win, so the voltage goes through here. This is exactly the same as before, but now when we get down to here, we have to say, where is the lowest voltage? we're going to pick that path to go through. In this case, it's B. So B is here, so diode 6 is now going to turn on, and it's going to go through here. And this one, the other one, is just blocking for the moment. There's no current going through it. 
Now we move to the next phase, and this time C actually has the highest voltage, A is in the middle range, and then B is the lowest voltage. So we start from the beginning. We know that C is the highest, so actually current is going to flow through here, through diode 5, out of here, through the load, to the other side. We get here, we say, where do we go from here? We'll go to the lowest voltage. We see the lowest voltage is B, so we're going to go through unletter diode 6 and go back through here. So this is going to be our, our current flow direction. In this phase, still C is highest, but now we've switched from B being the high, lowest to A being the lowest, or so this area. So again, we go start from C, current's going to flow through C, go through to our load out here. Again, we pick the lowest voltage. In this case, it's A. So A is going to be this guy, so diode number 4. We're going to go through this way and come back around. So there is our path for current. Here we have B as the highest. Now it's switched, so B is the highest. And then A is the lowest. So from B, we go through here and go through diode 3, through our load, come back, and go through... Our lowest one here is A, so we're going to go to A, which is over here. Right. Going through all of these. Here again, B is the highest, but this time C is the lowest, so B is the highest. Current's going to go through here, go through D3 again, and then we're going to go through to C being the lowest. One, two, A, B, C, which is here. So diode two, and go through here, and then come out here. So. Current flow goes this way. So after going through all of the six phases, we've seen that the top part, these three diodes, essentially make the highest voltage go through. And then these three diodes make the most negative voltage be seen at the bottom side. So in this picture, you can see the positive voltage is shown here. What they left out would actually the negative part, which is shown here, so the negative is also followed here. And this is my terrible drawing, I'm sorry. Pretend that it actually follows. And if you do the math on each of these, if you take this portion minus this portion, this minus that, for each of them, you'll actually get at the bottom this nice wave rectifier shown here. So this uh, bumpy part at the top is the rectified waveform. And you see that there's six little bumps because of the six different phases that we went through before. Six diodes, three on top, three on the bottom. We can take a three-phase waveform and turn it into a rectified waveform, which will end up looking like this at the end.